Our top story today, Russian President Vladimir Putin is all set to visit India today for the traditional annual summit between leaders of both countries. As India gears up for the much-anticipated Modi-Putin talks in the evening, reports suggest up to 10 bilateral agreements will be signed during President Putin's visit to boost the India-Russia strategic partnership. India and Russia will also hold the first 2 plus 2 format Russian Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov and Defence Minister Sergei Shoigu will hold talks with their Indian counterparts Dr. S. J. Shankar and Rajnath Singh. The ministers are expected to hold in-person discussions on key regional and international issues, including developments in Afghanistan and the situation in the Asia-Pacific region. This will be Putin's second visit outside Russia this year. The first was in June to meet U.S. President Joe Biden in Geneva. Putin has skipped visits to the G20 summit, the Glasgow Climate Conference, and rescheduled a visit to China because of the ongoing COVID-19 pandemic. His trip to India highlights the significance Putin places on bilateral ties with traditional ally India. With this visit, Putin is indicating that this tour is not just about maintaining the special strategic partnership with India, but also about strengthening the bilateral relationship. This comes despite New Delhi's growing closeness to Washington. According to reports, Russia and India will sign 10 bilateral agreements in various areas, including some semi-confidential ones following the talks. The meeting between Putin and Indian Prime Minister is also likely to see the presentation of the S-400 air defense system to India. According to reports, both the countries are also likely to sign a deal on supplying AK-203 assault rifles to India. Despite the changing geopolitical equations, Delhi and Moscow remain closest of allies. But some areas of difference will be difficult to ignore, given the fact that both Russia and India are closing up to different partners involved in the geopolitical rivalry between U.S. and China. The clash of ideas regarding the Indo-Pacific and the re-emergence of the Quad group comprising of Australia, Japan, U.S. and India could create an impact on the upcoming summit. Well, we on principal diplomatic correspondent Sidhan Sibal from New Delhi and from California, Stephen Golub, who is an international affairs expert, are both joining us to talk more about this summit. Gentlemen, welcome to the program. I will start with you, Sidhan. Many call the relationship between India and Russia a time-tested friendship. Apart from bilaterals, take us through the significance of this trip, especially for India. Well, this is a visit uh, which is coming uh, at a time when we know that uh, COVID pandemic has uh, made sure that not many movements happen globally. In fact, Delhi is a busy capital and we haven't seen any major visits since uh, uh, the US President, the then US President Donald Trump visited India in February of uh, uh, last year and uh, we have just seen the Denmark leadership uh, uh, visiting Delhi and now of course Putin coming uh, here in India. He's going to land uh, later today here in Delhi and uh, we can expect a slew of packs uh, being signed, including military packs. Uh, uh, as we know that uh, the Russian side has said that 10 packs will be signed and we can expect packs in various uh, subjects uh, from space to defense uh, to connectivity. We know connectivity has been something that has been part of the conversation uh, with uh, the Vladivostok Chennai uh, route being discussed many times between the two sides. But significant uh, uh, basically because uh, the Russian president uh, who of course uh, is coming to uh, Delhi. Uh, he hasn't been outside as you just pointed out uh, and he's making sure that he comes to Delhi, meets the Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi and of course there can be big ticket announcements as well. Mr. Golub, what does the uh, Indo-Russian engagement mean for the US and China? Well, you know, it, it's true that um, the world is one as your aptly named company indicates, but boy, the world is complicated and the situation India is here is in here is a great indication of that complication. Uh, you know, on the one hand, um, the U.S. and India share a fundamental uh, security interest as well as economic interest in ensuring that China does not dominate uh, or intrude on their uh, defense and economic interests. And China is in many ways an expanding power. 
On the other hand, India has, as you pointed out very aptly, a long-standing relationship with Russia. And in terms of certain current issues, such as Afghanistan, they share an interest in trying to control uh, terrorism that might flow out of what is now a Taliban-controlled nation. So I think the U.S. Uh, doesn't like the fact that India is, for example, buying uh, or, or obtaining um, uh, missile defense systems from Russia, but it understands India's perspective and understands that these systems are really directed against China and Pakistan, certainly not against the U.S. And I think uh, that will, so there will be ongoing differences of opinion between the U.S. and India, but there is also an ongoing friendship and even more important, some very fundamental ongoing shared interests. Sidhan, defense issues will be a major focus for the Russia and India engagement, where the supply of Russian air defense missile systems to India will be done. What are the advantages of this military cooperation to the Asia-Pacific region? Well, uh, if we talk about India-Russia relationship, defense forms the key pillar of this relationship. Uh, this is something that has been talked about. In fact, uh, Indian uh, defense, uh, uh, the, there are other Indian defense systems who, of course, uh, have been brought from Russia in the past. Of course, India is now diversifying, but essentially still now uh, India and Russia have a strong relationship, but now focus is uh, uh, to manufacture Russian equipments and Russian, uh, re Russian defense equipments here in India. And S-400 is something that has been much talked about. In fact, uh, the contract for the agreement was signed during the last visit of the Russian President uh, Vladimir Putin uh, way back in 2018. And, and in this visit, we are, in fact, seeing uh, uh, the equipments being delivered. In fact, uh, uh, units will be delivered this uh, month uh, and we will see deployment in the month of February. But uh, essentially, in terms of defense, we will see packs being signed. We will be seeing uh, the naval Pacts being signed between the two sides that will see more exercises between the two sides. Uh, uh, we will see uh, pacts uh, which will help uh, both uh, the, the uh, navies uh, uh, essentially cooperate in the, the wider Indo Pacific region. There are, of course, uh, areas of differences in the larger geopolitics. Uh, one, of course, in, is Indo Pacific. Uh, we know that uh, New Delhi is a strong proponent of Indo Pacific vision, while Russia sees uh, uh, its Suspiciously, because it sees it being backed by Washington. Finally, Mr. Golub, you also mentioned this. Critics argue the supplies put India at risk of sanctions from the U.S. following a law aimed at deterring countries from buying Russian military hardware. Where does that place India? And what would likely be possible outcomes of this summit? It's This is just a guess, but I would think that despite that law, uh, which states that... Uh, uh, buying defense uh, systems or materials uh, from Russia, uh, Iran, uh, and North Korea could and should generate sanctions, I would think that the U.S. will suspend or otherwise not apply that law to India in this case. For the reasons I stated, they've got such fundamental shared interests regarding China, uh, regarding economic issues, that and India is such an important country that I think the U.S. would not go ahead and enforce that. What it might do, however, is tell India and, and act on this that says our own defense cooperation with you, the United States with India cannot go too far in, because of cooperation between India and Russia on defense matters. So it won't be so much punishment, certainly, or sanctions, but it could be that there'll be a limit or there'll be a warning of a limit on U.S. defense cooperation if India and Russia continue to pursue the type of defense cooperation we're, that we're seeing at the summit. Sidhan Sibal and Stephen Golub, thank you very much, gentlemen, for talking to WeOn. WeOn is now available in your country. Download the app now and get all the news on the move.